However, what if we have an alkene which can help us form enantiomers? So let's give an example of that. Let's say instead of starting with propene, we start with uh, this molecule, which I forgot the name of already, but that's okay. And now uh, let's draw the skeletal versions on the left side because I'm lazy. Okay, so what we have here is on the right carbon, we have two hydrogens, while on the left carbon, we have an ethyl group, meaning two carbons here, and a propyl group, three carbons here. Now, the first step in this reaction is the same as what we had before, in which we have essentially negative density, electron density, both above and below the, the double bond. And then we have the hydrogen halide with a partial positive, partial positive on the hydrogen and a partial negative on the halide. So we have the double bond attack the hydrogen and the electrons between the hydrogen and the chlorine or the halide go completely towards the chlorine. So the intermediate we form is this. Now, what was the intermediate we form? What what is the intermediate we form from this product? Well, we know from Makarov's rule that we have to form the more stable carbocation. So let's go through over in our mind what are the two carbocations we can form. Let's say we have the proton attached to this carbon here, so we ignore this, and now we have a positive formal charge of plus one on this carbon. And then we notice that that would be a tertiary carbocation because you have three carbons, one here, one here, and one here, bonded to the positive carbon. Now let's say we have the proton, instead of attacking the, instead of bonding to the right carbon, we have it bond to the left carbon. So then we look at this side, we notice that we'd only get a primary carbocation because this carbon here, the positive one, will be only attached to one other carbon. Therefore, we know that the tertiary carbocation is much more stable, meaning that the proton, the H, would much rather prefer to attack the right carbon. So the intermediate we get is this, which is a tertiary carbocation. And then we also have the Cl minus, the anion before. Now we know from general chemistry that anytime we have three things bonded to an atom, we form a trigonal planar structure, meaning it's essentially flat. Now because this carbon here is essentially flat, we can have the chlorine at equal, have an equal chance of attacking either side. Now before, in our propene case, it didn't matter what side we attacked because either way we formed the same product. We formed no enantiomers, we formed this product because we had two identical methyl groups on here. However, if you notice on this carbon here, we have three different groups. No groups are identical. We have an ethyl group, a propyl group, and a methyl group. Because of that, we can form two enantiomers. Now, what would the product we get if we had the Cl essentially attacked from the top side of the chlorine? So, let's say we have here. So, what we get is, using wedges and dashes to show 3D, we have this. Now that would be our product if we had the chlorine attack from the top side. But what about if we had to attack from the bottom side, meaning the other side of the carbon. So we would get something different down here. Um, now if you put if you uh, make 3D models of these two molecules, you'll see that they don't overlap each other. Instead, they are non-superposable mirror images of, of each other, meaning they must be two enantiomers. Now, how did I know that this reactant here, this alkene, would form an enantiomer? Well, what I look for, essentially, is not, a, is not a general rule, but I just look for it whenever I do problems, is I look for the carbon, 
and look to see if it's attached to three different groups. And this, if you look at this carbon here, it is attached to an ethyl group, a propyl group, and a methyl group. Because of that, it must have the possibility of forming two enantiomers. However, in before, when we had a, we, when we had the alkene B uh, propene, we looked at this carbon here, we saw that it had two identical methyl groups. Therefore, since this carbon here contained two identical groups, it could not form an enantiomer. Because generally, the enantiomers we have are carbons which are attached to four different groups.